because there is still so much growth in the price to happen before the world adopts it. And I do expect the world to adopt Bitcoin as a currency. Maybe one of the biggest drivers uh, in Bitcoin where the price can virtually double or triple or quadruple in a week uh, based on a fear that a country will either leave the European Union or the Eurozone, I should say, uh, with the common currency um, or get kicked out, though the European Union doesn't really want to kick anybody out, but you never know. And that will eventually happen, and I'm expecting that to happen this decade. Welcome to Dream Richer. Today, Tone Vey's a very successful crypto trader, shares when and how he thinks the price of Bitcoin will break all-time highs. He even goes as far as to say, Bitcoin is hands down the best hedge against inflation. He argues that Bitcoin is yet to see the greatest price rise where the price could double or even quadruple, all within the span of one week. From humble beginnings in 2008 to its 2021 price peak, Bitcoin, BTC, has taken investors and the world for quite the ride. In just over a decade, the first cryptocurrency has spiked and crashed and rallied and fallen again, over and over, on the way to a price in the tens of thousands. The initial traction in Bitcoin came from the fact that it was so decentralized. Hence, its protocol couldn't be changed to suit certain individuals. This saw Bitcoin's adoption skyrocket over the past recent years. There are many large whales supporting Bitcoin, some of which include Tesla, MicroStrategy, and Square. At the start of last year, Tesla announced that they would now accept Bitcoin payments. This simple publicity shot Bitcoin to all-time highs. It's clear that Bitcoin has large upside potential like Tone Vey suggests. If you like the video, then don't forget to subscribe. Let's get right into it. Bitcoin right now is still going through a stage where it's appreciating a lot. And spending that Bitcoin isn't the best use of the Bitcoin. Especially when you're spending that Bitcoin in a way where you know the person receiving it is just going to sell it because they need their local fiat currency to pay their bills and expenses. So I try not to spend any Bitcoin and I spend government money because I still earn government money through my businesses. And that's the money I want to spend and I wanna save that Bitcoin for the future or when I know someone believes in Bitcoin, and if I spend Bitcoin with them, they will actually hold on to that Bitcoin. That, if I know that's the person's mentality, I am way more likely uh, to spend Bitcoin with that person. Legal tender, it's good and a little bit of bad. So the, good, the best part about making Bitcoin legal tender is that you just told your entire population that you are welcome to use Bitcoin. You will not be labeled a criminal. You will not be labeled a money launderer. Uh, you are welcome to use it without fear that the government's gonna come and get you. At the same time, by making it legal tender, you're almost forcing everyone to accept it. And Bitcoin is for the more technologically inclined. And I'm sure there is a percentage of the local population that is just not technologically ready to accept it. And they don't wanna get in an argument with their customer who wants to pay in Bitcoin and has the legal standing to force you to accept Bitcoin, but you're just not technologically ready. It's like, imagine your grandma being told that she will never get a paper piece of mail again and that she has to <coughs> accept email and she has no idea how to do it. Ideally, he didn't need to make it legal tender, just needed to announce that Bitcoin is welcomed and any business is welcome to use it. Anyone is welcome to accept it. Anyone is welcome to spend it. You do not have to worry about any criminal charges for using Bitcoin. And the country itself is going to migrate its strategic reserve savings uh, into Bitcoin, just like corporations are doing, uh, micro strategies, even Tesla, Square, and many others will join as well. Uh, for the majority of the people, the best thing they can do is to dollar cost average into Bitcoin, try to take five, 10, 20% of your paycheck, put it into Bitcoin. Try to offer a product or a service and sell it for Bitcoin. Uh, 
try to uh, just buy it if you have to. Uh, but slowly set it up. Hey, you know what? Buy me 200 euros worth of Bitcoin every month, 500 euros worth of Bitcoin every month. I'm going to move into a slightly smaller apartment so I can buy a little more Bitcoin because there is still so much growth in the price to happen before the world adopts it. And I do expect the world to adopt Bitcoin as a currency. Uh, there's basically three ways to acquire money. One, you provide a good or a service that someone else is willing to pay for. You could tax people uh, on their productivity, on their knowledge. That's, invest that's the taxes on your investment, uh, taxes on your inheritance, which you've earned. Or you can just print the money. And especially since COVID, uh, where the government shut down the economy, uh, they had to print a lot of money to support people that they told are not able to work because they told them you can't go to work, so we will just pay you not to work. Uh, but where does that money come from? And the government is printing that money. And because of that, um, a lot of the things that you buy are going up in price and that devalues uh, the dollar, the euro, and every other currency, but they're all devaluing against each other. Uh, and now there's Bitcoin. And I believe Bitcoin will be the best inflation protection hedge, better than precious art, better than land, better than yachts. And hopefully people will just start using Bitcoin, which cannot be inflated because there will only be 21 million Bitcoin, but they get very divisible. So there is enough Bitcoin for the entire world. And the sooner people start using it, the better off they will be. But it wasn't until 2013 when it really clicked based on what happened in Cyprus. When the Cyprus banks shut down and the government confiscated 50% of everybody's money above 100,000 euro, I realized that Bitcoin was the only unconfiscatable asset humans have ever owned. And today I own unconfiscatable.com and we have a conference called Unconfiscatable just based on that realization that I had. Uh, and I've been promoting that side of Bitcoin as the most important aspect of Bitcoin. Mr. Tone argues that Bitcoin will become the global currency of the world. But as he argues, right now is perhaps not the best time to push for a worldwide adoption. This effects of this are very clear in El Salvador taking on Bitcoin as a legal tender. A recent study found that in 2019, more than half of the country was not online. As such, those who cannot operate smartphones, especially the elderly or those who are not experienced with the digital, will get left behind and find it hard to survive. Mr. Tone argues instead of countries forcing Bitcoin adoption on their citizens, it should instead be announced a legal asset instead of legal tender. This will allow for a greater freedom of choice, where those who wish to deal in Bitcoin and those who wish to deal in other tenders can do so freely. When my family fled communist Russia in the late 80s, we were only allowed to leave the country, never to come back, with, five, with 100 US dollars worth of money. No matter how much wealth you had, the government kept it all, and, you, and your family gets to leave with $100 per person uh, to start a new life somewhere else, right? So this is what Bitcoin now eliminates. You can store as much money as you like in your head, and you can take that across any border. Uh, so Cyprus really sparked my interest in Bitcoin with this unconfiscatability feature, because I said, wait a minute, I have over $100,000 in the bank. I have a job that pays me over $100,000 a year. How does the bank and the government just take your money out of the bank for their own personal use? And that is what drove me into Bitcoin. Then what happened in Greece was another disaster where they shut down the banks as well. And you were only allowed to withdraw uh, 20 euros a day and then eventually 400 euros for the week. And th this is the kind of stuff as part of my presentation where I teach people Bitcoin stops this from happening to your money. Maybe one of the biggest drivers uh, in Bitcoin where the price can virtually double or triple or quadruple in a week uh, based on a fear that a country will either leave the European Union or the Eurozone, I should say, uh, with the common currency 
um, or get kicked out, though the European Union doesn't really want to kick anybody out, but you never know. And that will eventually happen, and I'm expecting that to happen this decade. What interested me is why you would think that the coin of choice should be Bitcoin. That is a good question. It's not whether, whether I think it should be, it's that I believe that it will be. Uh, because Bitcoin is the only cryptocurrency that is truly decentralized. No one controls it. No one can change its supply. Um, altering anything in Bitcoin, even the smallest thing, is very difficult. And Bitcoin, yes, Bitcoin, the technology of Bitcoin, where people say, oh, it's old, it's already over a decade old, it's not moving fast enough, it's not adopting to the latest thing fast enough, but that's not where its value is. Its value is in its security. The fact that you cannot alter Bitcoin code easily is what makes it trusted. It's this concept of trustless trust. You are trusting the fact that Bitcoin is trustless and nobody controls it. And none of the other digital currencies, cryptocurrencies have that trust. I would never put my life savings in any other cryptocurrencies, not Ethereum, not any of the others, because I just don't believe that they are decentralized. I believe there are a small group of people that can get on a phone call and alter anything they like. Um, I believe that the regulators can get them. I believe that governments can put pressure on the people in charge of those coins because they are just too centralized. Because on a longer term time scale, um, all of those other cryptocurrencies are just like the traditional fiat money systems. They're no different than the central bank digital currencies that are coming because governments want to eliminate cash. Cash is a big problem. Paper cash is a big problem for governments because they have less control over people and over people spending and what they buy and over their efforts to make taxation. So they are trying to make their central bank digital currencies to eliminate cash. Eliminating cash eliminates ATMs. It eliminates a run on the bank. It allows them to set any monetary policy they like. It allows them to have taxation to the point where we tax you and then we give you um, whatever is left back to you. And these other cryptocurrencies are no different than that. I believe they have leaders that can do exactly the same thing. Um, and that's why I believe Bitcoin is our only shot at separating governments from the control of the money that we use. Uh, with a you know, finite hard currency like Bitcoin, you know, it's going to be hard separating people from their money. But I believe that a person's money is like a person's arm. And they should have free will to use that arm. They, have, they should have free will to use their money. It's not up to another person's business how you are using your money. If you use that money for an illegal act, you have to uh, you know, go after that person for the illegal act, not the money. Um, I think the problem is the money laundering laws the know your customer laws, the KYC laws. Um, I believe that um, if you are soliciting me for money, and there is a lot of fraud that happens. I mean, people try to steal Bitcoin all the time because you just can't get it back. If you are soliciting me for money, whether you're going to manage my money, whether you're going to protect my money, hold my money, you should be regulated. The government should be very you should be scrutinized because you are taking my money and you are now responsible for my money, so you should be regulated. But I should not be regulated. I should have free ability to give my money to anyone I want without being turned a criminal. It's clear from Tonevay's prediction that Bitcoin is yet to see its greatest price rise. If anything, right now is the best time to take advantage of low Bitcoin prices and slowly begin to build your portfolio. There are 12 main benefits of Bitcoin that provide it with the large upside potential in price movement. These include, number one, Bitcoin is permissionless. Two, Bitcoin is immune to seizure. Number three, Bitcoin is censorship resistant. Four, Bitcoin is decentralized. 
5. Bitcoin is an open source. Number 6. Bitcoin is fast and easy to use. 7. Bitcoin is a push system. Number 8. Bitcoin is real money and has been deemed property. 9. Bitcoin provides anonymity. Number 10. All you need is an internet connection to use Bitcoin. 11. Bitcoin is transparent. And finally, number 12. Bitcoin is freedom. Do you agree with what he said? Let us know in comments below. See you in the next video.